Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Beer Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be doing a Linux distro tier list. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I do want to thank my sponsor, which is PCBWay. And if you guys are into DIY projects or electronics, look no further than PCBWay, where they can actually do all the manufacturing for you. By uploading your designs to their website, you can get quotes within minutes. And using their latest manufacturing techniques, they'll be able to have the product by your doorstep in record time. Not only do they do PCB, they also do 3D printing, casting, tons of stuff that you might need for your next project. So check out PCBWay. Now back to the video. Now I'm only gonna be able to put this tier list together for the distros that I know or familiar with. So if your distro is missing and it's not on this list, um, actually I, I wanna know about it. So hit me up in the comments down below. Now I'm ranking the distros for great, good, average, bad, do not recommend, and lightweight. Lightweight seems to have its own category because there's a lot of operating systems that should be lightweight and older computers. Great is probably where I would say highly recommend, this is what I would use and obviously going down the list. Now to begin, the first thing I'm gonna put onto great is Debian. This is gonna go right up to the great. Now, honestly, that could would have been changed if I did this list a few months ago. Due to the fact that Debian just released their latest uh, release, which is Bookworm, and I think it was back in June or July, they just recently released their latest distro, which technically is what I'm on right now. Like what you see this desktop in, uh, that's what I'm on right now, Debian uh, Bookworm, and I'm on KDE. The reason behind that is, Debian is actually very stable and functional for desktop use and server use. You will actually find Debian in a lot of servers, which what I actually have a couple of Debians in production right now. So I will actually use Debian in production servers. Even though the older versions of Debian uh, might hold back packages, they might be some couple of versions behind due to the fact they will use stability over the newer features. And that's just one of the things you have to figure out what you want. Debian is rock stable. So that's why I recommend using Debian. For a lot of people who are starting off, um, Debian is not a bad start either. As long as you get a desktop environment on there and something you know, um, you can navigate around Debian pretty well. All right, so next up down the list, I would say Ubuntu. Now, I used to rank this a lot higher, uh, but now it's more in the average range. Uh, just because Ubuntu had a really good name for itself when it first came out. It actually put Linux almost on the map. Over the years, I think 16 and on, maybe even 14 and on, uh, Chronicle started to get, uh, behind the scenes, they started to, doing, they started to do stuff a little, not what I, I would like basically, I like adding Amazon into uh, your start bar or forcing snap packages onto you but closing down the snap so you can't you know, add your own re uh, repos to it. Or I don't know, a few more stuff along the line. So if you like the Debian operating system or Ubuntu operating system, there's many to choose from that doesn't use the Chronicle backend. And if you don't like the Chronicle backend, that's, that's the main reason of Ubuntu being at the average because of what they do, the practices in the back end, in my opinion for that. So that's why I kind of keep Ubuntu down in the average range. So next up we have Pop! OS. Now Pop! OS, I believe it falls right between good and average. I really like the desktop. I really like the operating system. It does take away from the Chronicle area. So you're using flat packages. You have semi-decent updated packages. It's not the most up to date. That's because they're more concerned about other stuff right now. And the Cosmic desktop is a little bit dated, but they do have a lot of new features in there like the tiling and their own menu system, which I really, really like. And it's very, very easy for new users to come by. I will stick Pop! OS into the good area. I think it would be definitely good if they start updating their Linux operating system because they are still on the LTS support right now. So they're on the older Ubuntu version. But once they move towards the 24.04 and update the desktop and update the packages and update all the software, they will definitely stay in the good, maybe even great, depending on how up to date they get everything too. So for now, I do say it's good. I would use it for a lot of my operating systems, especially like for laptops, Pop! OS just goes in, works with the graphic card drivers, uh, easy to install applications. So Pop! OS will stay in the good area. Now, uh, next up we have is Manjaro. Now this is a big controversy one and I am actually gonna stick this down to the bad area. Um, the reason behind it is more the operating system works. I, I personally never had a problem with it and I do install this from time to time. A couple of months ago, I was using this for a few months for Manjaro just because Steam Deck switched over to that and I decided to give it another try. But 
it doesn't deter from the fact of what's going on in the back end. Now, you could do more research about this, but there's been a lot of shady stuff that's going on in the back end of Manjaro, which is the company wide, not the company side, not just uh, the operating system back end, I mean. Um, mainly because like they have certificate errors, uh, so sometimes they would even tell you to roll back your system time just so you could download stuff. Um, they have issues with how they're spending their finances. There's just a ton of stuff behind that company that's a little unsettling, which is why I put it into bad section. I mean, if you want to get some arch and some stability, not even stability, here's the thing. They sometimes launch programs that is in beta that even the app creators would not recommend going out, but they would put it in their app store, which will end up breaking stuff. Not only that, they will have older packages, which this happened to me. If you're not familiar with Arch, th th this will happen. They sometimes issue older packages. Then you got the AUR and you want to install something from AUR, but the older broken packages or whatever state of the packages that they have on their system will not work with the installations that AUR want. And then there's a lot of conflicts. You might break something. Manjaro is like right up that alley with that. So that's why I don't really say to use Manjaro. I would say that's a bad one. Now, next up down the list, um, I have Zorin. Here's, <laughs> this is, um, ah, it falls between average and bad. Uh, this is hard to debate what I want to do with this because Zorin is Ubuntu based. It's a pretty good operating system, but it's out of date. It's very out of date. Um, I think they're still on 20.04 on their operating systems and their packages and software is very old as well. As much as their desktop is geared towards new users and very familiar from people switching from Windows into Zorin OS, um, my, understand, my, my thought about it is that they're shipping with very old software and that's what is very unsettling with Zorin, for me at least. Uh, for every time that I've tried to use it, there haven't been an update since, well, they're still on 20.04. Um, I mean, I would say it's average. It's a good operating system. It's a good desktop. They got their own thing going on over there. They do bring some stuff to the table, but it's just old. Like, that's what I mean. It's old. Now, next down the list, I have elementary OS, and I would stick that into average. I don't really have a problem with it. I do like elementary's ideals. They have their own desktop manager, which is called Pantheon. I really like the look and the feel of it but to force feed you their type of packaging because they removed everything Ubuntu under. They, you have to go through their repository and to force feed their styling and not really force feed. Okay, I'm gonna take that back. But to imply to use their format and their style, I get what they're trying to do and they could, you know, they're not telling you you have to use the operating system, but I like the styling. I like that they're trying to keep everything unified. I like that they're trying to keep everything together into the same style and everything. And I really like the look of it. And it's very functional. I've actually used elementary for a very long time on my laptops, on my desktops and everything. But eventually I had to evolve from that because they are still using a very old version of Linux and they are using older packages. Same thing goes for Zorin OS, but I like elementary styling and their ideals of what they're trying to bring to the table. Now, here's a Linux I would actually not recommend to anyone, which is Kali Linux. Uh, Kali Linux is for uh, security researchers or pen testers or stuff like that, but it's not really geared towards uh, desktop user environment friendly type thing. When you first install that, you are stuck as a root user. That opens a huge gate of vulnerabilities that you could do. It's, it's not meant for average Joe's to use as a desktop. It's really meant for security researchers. And even if that, if you don't understand the fundamentals of Linux, using Kali Linux might even hurt you even more because it's got system access and everything. So I don't really recommend using Kali Linux because Technically, all the tools that you need from Kali Linux, you can install on any Ubuntu distro. So Kali Linux would be on the do not recommend list. <laughs> uh, next one is Puppy Linux. Actually, I really like Puppy Linux for a very lightweight operating system. They have everything that you need. It's super lightweight for older computers. They have Firefox installed. They have all the stuff that you need to get going just to get the operating system up and running. So Puppy Linux is very lightweight compared to a lot of the other ones that I've tested before. So I do recommend Puppy Linux if you got an older computer and you want to actually revive it and use it again. Uh, next up, I know of PC Linux OS. Um, I don't use that before. Alpine is a really lightweight one and I don't even know if it should be on the list because technically uh, it's on the lines of like you have to build everything from scratch. It's just a very small, Linux distro and you would have to put the desktops and all that stuff in there. It can be pretty good. I like their package manager. 
um, but in the sense it's not for everyone it's it's more made for appliances you could say like Alpine Linux would be great for dockers and stuff like that so um, I don't know where to put this on the list probably on the bad uh, just because it's it's great Alpine Linux works great it's just you have to build everything from scratch and it's not for new users and believe me even I don't even know half the package name so I can't even build out Alpine the way I want to because I could still be missing like I don't know battery managers or something like that if I wanted to install this on a laptop so yeah I'm gonna put this on the bad side because it's not really uh, it's good it's lightweight but it's not really f usable in a sense of a daily driver all right uh, next up we have Kubuntu um, I'm not even gonna recommend this it's just basically Ubuntu with its KDE shell uh, so all the variants of Ubuntu I'm probably not going to put on this list but just keep in mind they're basically Ubuntu they have the same problem they have Chronicle they're stuck with Snap but they're running the same issues that they have over there so uh, unless it's like KDE Neon where you're out of that and you're, they're using, you're using Debian backend and you have all your own packages and everything yeah I'm not yeah that's not going on the list all right uh, another one Solus uh, Solus is one that I've used for a little bit I did initially like it but it is going to be on the do not recommend list because it is so it's very outdated i like the fact that they built their operating system from ground up but the last time they've actually been updated was i think 2021 which was about two years ago now and they haven't had a new uh, iso download they don't have any much new packages and it's kind of almost like the developers gave up on it it almost feels like that i have not tested it recently i tested it last year like end of last year but i have not tested it recently but it's still out to, uh, out of date even if I install it now so I'm gonna leave this on the do not recommend list Solus now Arch Linux has its ups and downs so for I, I really like it I actually go back to it from time to time I made install videos on this Arch Linux is definitely like up in the area of like a good operating system but I would never use this on a production machine and that is the problem if you want to use this for huge learning ability uh, about the Linux ecosystem and stuff Arch Linux is great you actually have to be like a pretty good in Arch uh, on Linux just to understand how things work but after you do understand how Linux worked with LS and uh, um, how hardware works and how certain things work on Linux itself Arch Linux is actually not a bad operating system it's actually pretty decent uh, that's why I put it up into the good but also I am gonna put Arch Linux also in the do not recommend this is this gets two categories it's good it's just gotta just because if you're a new user Arch Linux is a nightmare for you um, you don't know what packages you need when you do get a package there's times that it'll break packages uh, you could have something named one way four months later it'll be named something else and everything else breaks so Arch Linux as um, for developers is a nightmare for servers we don't touch uh, for desktop users maybe we would probably use it for desktops but you have to be advanced level desktop so if you're like a new user or just getting into Linux I would not touch Arch Linux uh, if you've been using Linux for a while and you want something fresh Arch Linux I would definitely go for it. that's how I'm gonna keep going back to it so it does earn two categories on this because it's just right between that area now we have Fedora uh, Fedora is a rock stable system I've used this for a while actually Fedora and Nobora these two operating systems um, I'll explain on Nobora a little bit later but Fedora is rock stable I would actually use Fedora on a production machine um, it's very good as a desktop it's stable the only problems I have with Fedora right now is when you want to install drivers like Nvidia drivers you would have to use the RPM package manager and stuff like that but if you aside that fact if you're going to put install this on a server you might not even have an Nvidia graphic card but aside from that it is a really stable operating system just like Debian yeah it's it's very easy to use you have the DNF package manager you have up-to-date uh, software like very up-to-date software so I would actually put Fedora into the great area versus all these other ones now I did mention Nabora and Nabora is a really good operating system I, I don't think I'm going to put this on the list but it's a the variative of Fedora but it's made by the guy who created uh, Glorious Egg Roll which is the thing that we use a lot of in Proton so Proton GE which is Glorious Egg Roll he's the one that developed this operating system for his testing base so um, 
you know that this operating system is tuned for gaming. It's going to work much better for, for gaming or testing gaming or getting games to work. He put a lot of time into this operating system. Um, so if you're familiar with Fedora, it's got the Fedora shell, but it's got a lot of his back-end stuff. Um, actually, you know what? This, this probably should go into the average. Um, he's got a lot of his back-end stuff in there to make everything work for games, and I've used it for quite some time just to play around with the operating system, especially on my laptop. It was working great. Like, I was able to get a lot of the games and not even have to worry about driver mismatch or uh, issues with not being able to play the certain games because the kernel is kind of tuned the way that he needed to to get certain things to work. So, yeah, that definitely goes into the average range. For honorable mentions, I would say Deep in Linux would probably be on the Do Not Recommend just because of the stuff that's going on in the back end. I do like the desktop environment. I really do enjoy using DDE or des uh, Debian desktop environment, but you can actually install that on Ubuntu. So if you want to try that. NixOS is something I really want to try because of what they're bringing to the table, but I haven't had a chance to t uh, test it yet. So I can't really talk about it because I haven't tested their install method. It's really cool how they got things going. I do know about it. I just haven't tested it yet. And the list is not perfect. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people debating about this. So uh, let me know what your thoughts are. If you guys are interested in this, you could always reach me at Discord or down in the comments below, but more on Discord. It's easier to reach out, reach out to me on Discord than on the comments down below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And that same on Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.